I'm plus size and on a plane. Of course I can't fit the tray table now. I'm plus size and on a plane. Of course I'm gonna sit beside the smallest member of my family. I'm plus size and on a plane. Of course the armrest is digging. You a full grown woman, right? I'm plus size and on How are you a full grown woman? You have to look, you look like you in your mid forties at minimum, but it's always really hard to judge these people based on the age that they are. Super ambiguous. They can either be 20 years older or 20 years younger. It's really like up for, it's up in the air a lot of times. Can you imagine being a fully grown woman and complaining about something that you could literally change at a whim? Go to the gym, work out a little bit. I promise it's not as bad as people say it is. It's not even bad at all. It's actually fantastic. Juicing up the muscles, lubricating yourself with the internals of water, H2O in your mouth, consistency. That's all it is, okay? Calorie deficit. That's all you got to do. You don't even want to go to the gym. That's fine. You don't have to. But it's much better than complaining about an armrest that it's digging into your sides because your gut is so massive that it's uncomfortable to sit in almost any position. Let's just be honest here for a second. Even if you didn't have the armrest and they were fully extended up, you would still find somebody to complain about. I mean, you were literally complaining about not having the food tray go down on you. You are a grown woman, okay? Take some accountability. I know it's hard. I don't. I know it's difficult. And it's much easier to blame all your problems on like everybody else. But I got to tell you something. Being an adult and, 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 and not having any type of accountability or, or, or the ability to recognize that it's your problem and not the plane, it's, I mean, I can't even, I couldn't even imagine living in a world and then having to blame all my problems on a plane because the, the seat is too small, armrests exist. You know armrests are like pretty necessary for old people. And I'll give you a, a prime reason why, right? For me, I can just get up out of the seat, no problem, right? Look at that, see that? No problem, because I squat, I squat a lot, okay? And old people need the armrests in order to properly dispon like to 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 eject themselves out of the seat in a, in a timely manner so when i hear these people complain about it there's literally entire organizations out there by the way that are trying to get rid of armrests on chairs because they think that it's fat phobic or some bullshit like that and then also that's like that's like the people you remember when there was like a big movement for the vegans and they were saying that like animals were um, they were, they were not vegan enough and they needed to like stop the lions from eating gazelles and giraffes and all this other stuff, which by the way, I don't think lions are eating giraffes. I saw a whole documentary about it. David Attenborough was documenting it. It was insane. Yeah, in the African jungles, the lions haven't eaten in 14 days and they're going to try to take out a giraffe. And the giraffe fucked him up, dude. I couldn't even believe it. Here's one thing. If you ever get reincarnated as a giraffe um, or as a lion, never fuck with the giraffe, okay? These dudes are, they may look like pussies. They do. And I heard that they're a little bit homosexual. Um, the way they fight is a little bit weird. They just kind of swing neck at each other, which is incredible. But let me tell you something. Even if you were a pack of lions and you were like, dude, we could take this fucking dude, right? I got a switchblade. Jeffrey's got a gun. Let's go fuck this guy up. You're losing. I saw a giraffe literally roundhouse kick uh, a lion like his name was Patrick Swayze. And that dude's jaw flew off the side of his head. And then his boys just left him there. They're like, yeah, bro, um, it's over. Like, your jaw is gone. You can't eat anymore. You've literally lost your primary means of killing things. So you just left him there. It's crazy. But you know what? In a lot of ways in Africa, it's kind of like a miracle and a, and a curse in a lot of ways. I saw, a I saw a documentary on, I think it was like a hyena, and its back legs were done. Like he had broke his back or something like that. He, he went to go pick a fight with like Mufasa or something like that. And Mufasa bit his back and like snapped his spine or some shit like that. And he went full on Professor X from X-Men. And his whole bo bottom of the body couldn't work. But guess what? His all his uh, hyena friends were like, dude, no problem. We'll take care of you. And he was still doing some work, even with no back legs. Absolutely beautiful. You can actually probably watch some videos on that. If you look up, if you look up right now on YouTube and you look up hyena broken back, you'll probably find it. This dude is still living. He's I think he's still living. Last time I checked. But anyway, let's continue watching this terrible purse. This person complaining about things that can easily change. It's always the airplanes too, man. Always the most privilege of the people. I'm plus size and on a plane. Of course, I have to shimmy down the aisle sideways. Let me see that. Crazy as fuck. Look at this guy looking over like, damn, bro. What the fuck you doing? The hell you doing right now? You real deal doing this shit like that? You big as fuck if you're doing this shit. Look at <laughs> fucking Michael Duncan. The hell was that? You saw that guy? You're like, bro, what is? I'm just trying to enjoy my flight. 
Yeah, I'm just trying to enjoy my flight. I don't know why this big belly bitch on the plane like this, shimmying down the aisles. And she's smiling, dude. This is like this is like a, a, a gloating moment for her where she's she's sitting here and she's finding enjoyment out of this. And Michael Duncan over here is having a hard time looking at it. I'm plus size and on a plane. Of course, I need a seatbelt extender. I want to hear about the I want to hear about the toilet situation. I would love to know about that because they always complain about the toilet and not being able to fit in the in the bathroom. Some of them actually go as far as to not even be able to use the bathroom at all. So they have to like I don't know pre order bathroom installation. So they go to the bathroom three or four times right before. They don't drink any liquids. But I couldn't even imagine. Can you imagine like the night before and you have some really really bad I don't know. I've had a few times in my life, even in the last few weeks, where I've eaten expired green bread. And you know that's just going to be bubble gutting you. And it comes out of nowhere sometimes. So if you got to use the bathroom, you're just done. You have to use it right there in the seat because you know there's no way you're fitting in the, the airplane bathroom. Anyway. I've seen a lot of people complaining on TikTok, and rightfully so, that, like, plus-size representation is going away and that we've circled back around to, like, 90s, like, heroin chic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe not heroin chic, but definitely people getting in shape, definitely people that are trying to take accountability for themselves and real in a really positive direction in the sense of like losing weight and maybe taking Ozempic, which I don't recommend unless you have to and getting their life in order. Um, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. And everyone's exercising constantly Good. and talking about, I just want to be healthy. But what do you mean this? Why do you have to do this? Huh? Why do you have to do the bunny ears when it comes to healthy? Do you think that you're healthy? Do you think that you're in shape? Do you think that? When they say healthy, they mean thin. They mean skinny. Yeah, that is that is healthy. A lot of times. Especially when you're coming from a very obese body. That's going to be 100% healthy. At least healthier. People taking Ozempic who don't need it medically. Just so they can lose weight really quickly. And it, it is really disappointing to see as someone who went on a journey and really really tries to view myself as a neutral person and i have actually lost weight recently but right. for medical reasons because of different medications that i've been on and stresses in my life it is not that difficult to lose or gain weight but it is difficult to get yourself into a mindset where you can love yourself and see whenever i hear love yourself i just think of somebody beating off i don't know how like i hear these people saying that consistently where they go you have to love yourself you have to understand yourself and i think Sure, you have to love yourself, but the way that they describe loving yourself is such an interesting way of thinking about it because most people in their lives are going through their lives in a very passive direction. They're not really like making conscious decisions, which I think people should make more conscious decisions, but most people are just kind of doing things on a whim, right? I know, and you know, like for instance, I know that when I, I there was a time I had broken up with this person, right? And I was like going through major depression and I was like, you know what? I got to get my mind off this. What am I going to do? So I just went to Planet Fitness and I got a $10 gym membership and I just worked out consistently for like three months in a row and it helped me out a lot. And that could be in your mind, a very deliberate decision. Like I went out of my way to do something in order to stop thinking about it. But honestly speaking, it really wasn't deliberate. I just did it on a whim. I was out one day and I had no, I, I just was like, fuck it. I might as well. I'm out. I might as well just go to the gym. And I did. And that's pretty much how like most people go through their lives is like they just have decisions to make and they make those decisions right there on the spot. It takes a lot of patience and a lot of like deliberate work to actually sit down and make decisions like that. Whereas most people are just kind of going through life and doing passive decisions that may be big decisions. But regardless of that, the point I'm making is when I hear people say like you have to love yourself. I, I really struggle to understand what they mean by love themselves because I want to know, are they like sitting down going through why they love themselves, the gives and takes of their, their lives. And like, cause like, honestly speaking, if you're obese, what do you mean by love yourself? Can we just talk about that for a second? You are literally every day of your life. Granted, this person did say that they're losing weight. So I hope they continue to lose weight. But if you are obese and you're doing nothing about it, I struggle to see how you can love yourself. Your body is literally on life support every single day. You are taxing it beyond belief. But if you want to sit there and say that you are loving yourself, that's fine. I just struggle to find out how you're doing that. See your body in a neutral light, no matter what it actually looks like. So like a neutral light, regardless of what it looks like, your body is a tool to get you from place to place and get you from time to time. Right. And you want to maximize the amount of you want to maximize the amount of longevity that your body has in the same way that, for instance, your teeth. You only have one set of teeth. And I know a lot of people nowadays get like dentures or a lot of people nowadays get um, veneers, right? Uh, I.e. Steve Harvey and like literally the entire Hollywood everything. Uh, everybody has veneers or fake teeth. But organically speaking, you want to make sure that your teeth last you as long as you do, as long as you live, right? Um, realistically. 
And these people, I feel like they have such weird ways of defining how their body should like, oh, yeah, I view it in a very like I would struggle to find a, a person in this organization that would tell you that they, you shouldn't brush your teeth or take care of your teeth. Yet they don't give a fuck about taking care of their bodies. How the fuck do you do that? Your teeth are way less significant compared to the 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 oversizedness of your body. Right. You understand what I'm talking about? I just don't understand how they, they do these like how they scale things like their teeth are so prioritized for them, yet they don't give a fuck about their bodies in any way. I just don't understand how they can do that. Like. Don't go on that crash diet, girl. It won't work anyway. Most people are not doing crash diets. I'm going to keep it a buck, okay? Listen, I'm going to keep it a solid stack with you. If you're going on a crash diet, don't do that, obviously. Uh, if you're going to go fast, make sure you're doing it in a very, very responsible way and you know what you're doing and maybe go to people that have already done this before that can maybe guide you through this thing. Do research. Uh, you know, we have the internet now, so the internet is a very powerful tool to get information very quickly and then you can discern what is and what is not correct for you, right? Crash dieting, I would never recommend. I would always recommend people to do it the organic way which is a slight calorie deficit don't go too drastic don't if you're eating 3,000 calories a day and you think that it would be a good idea to go down through a thousand calories a day don't do that that's terrible that is going to literally it, that's going to literally be worse than if you didn't do it so don't do that lower it slightly if you're eating 3,000 calories go down to 27 you're going to lose weight i promise i promise and guess what cut out things that you know are not going to be good for you sodas cut them out you don't need to drink those things and if you do drink them diet diet sodas i'm not even a, like one of these people that shits on diet sodas or things that like oh you shouldn't drink these things because they're bad for you listen it's better than drinking actual soda and eventually you can get off of the the whole bracket of drinking sodas in general if you i know a lot of people shit on drinking water because they think you're a pussy or they think that, oh, water doesn't have any flavor. Stop saying that, dude. Water has a flavor. Anybody that's a legitimate connoisseur when it comes to the sensation of water in their mouth will tell you there is a taste with water. And there is a definite difference between different types of water. Like, I remember my friend was trying to tell me, he was trying to convince me that there's no difference between the tap water and bottled water. And I was like, that's ridiculous. There's obviously a difference. And we did a taste test. There was a random bottle of water that was filled with regular water, tap water. And then there was the bottled water. And there was another brand of bottled water, right? I was able to discern exactly what brand of water that was down to the T. I was like, yep, that's tap water. This is like Dasani. And this over here is Poland Spring. I know for a fact, I am a water drinking connoisseur in the same way that a gay man might be a connoisseur on the flavor of BBCs, right? This is a light skin penis. This is a dark skin penis. This is a white guy penis, right? You can just tell based off the sensation and maybe the fibers, um, maybe possibly the dandruff, the, the penis dandruff upon the penis, whatever. Right? That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm a connoisseur when it comes to tasting water. I feel like companies think making clothes for fat people would be glorifying obesity. This is my conspiracy theory. Because half the com comments that I get are like, when I say, you know, I'd like to see more fat people represented on TV in non demeaning ways. Yeah, it's really cringing, though. Like, you, you know, you, the way this person talks about that stuff is like, she's saying things that are fine. Like, you want to see more representation in media fat positive representation but it's just like so cringy because like why why do you have to go so far to try to get these like particular types of like representations it doesn't make any sense at all but whatever dude like would you complain for instance if we did like an ancient roman movie and you were like you know i'm really fucking upset that there's no fat people in ancient rome well guess what there was like one fat guy in, in all of ancient rome Okay. And he was probably like a God of something. So no, like most of the time, these things are not going to happen. And then all, obviously it's going to be a very niche scenario to just throw fat people. And depending on how fat they are, it may not even be practical at all. Right. They always complain that they like, Oh, Brendan Fraser and the whale, for instance, right? Oh, the fat, sh the fat suits. The problem a lot of times when I see people talk about the fat suits is that they're literally negating the fact that fat people are going to have an issue getting on set, doing the work. And it like as you it might be OK when you're younger, right? When you're younger, when you're like in your 20s, your early 20s, you might be able to pull it off for an extended period of time. Kind of like when I was I remember when I was like 21, I had sex with this girl for five hours and it was uncomfortable. It was not something I would ever do again. It just wasn't like a, a I could probably do it now, but I just never saw the reason to do it past maybe an hour at most, because like, what are we really accomplishing at that? That point and like in these particular scenarios maybe it could be like a proof like you have to prove something to yourself but 100 as you get older 
it just becomes less and less viable for you. And you're, you know, it, also your body's going to break down or at least your durability is going to break down. And that's okay because obviously it's going to happen. The aging process takes us all. But some people are victim to these, victims to these aging processes more than others. And as you become fatter and fatter and fatter, your body is like literally burning two ends of the candle simultaneously. Like your ex is like exponential exponential aging processes when you're when you're fat so when you want people that are very fat in roles movies and tv shows and other things such as so forth what i'm hearing from you is like you're failing to acknowledge that as you get older and as you're fatter your body is going to be less and less productivity wise um efficiently efficient and then you're the, the also how many professional actors are even obese? Like, that's going to be crazy to even talk about, right? Like, how many of these people are actually going to be in these roles? Um, do you want this guy? Do you want this guy? This guy can't even walk. Like, what is he going to do on set? Can't do much, right? Oh, uh, you know that guy that we casted for that movie like three months ago and he sh we shot like five scenes for the movie? He died like three days ago. Yeah. Um, what are we going to do? I don't know. Recast? I mean, we, we really can't recast because this guy has like a definitive face. So what the fuck do we do? Make the whole movie again, I guess, right? Just do start it all back, right? Let's do it live. Let's do it live. Let's do it live, right? That's what it's like. So it's a very stupid point, and oftentimes I'm looking at this shit as like you guys have other things to worry about. If you're talking about clothes, I think fat people should be clothed. Obviously, don't fucking go outside naked, Jesus Christ. Um, but I also think, why do you guys burden yourself with so many things that are incredibly like low on the totem pole, especially when you guys are literally dying day to day because you guys have so much extra body fat on your body and you're just like, you don't care about that? Like, why is it always the clothing items? I, honestly speaking, I don't give a fuck what I wear if I'm literally on death's door consistently. Anyway. Say, you know, I'd like to see more fat people represented on TV in non-meaning Cringe. ways. Cringe. People say, stop glorifying obesity. True. So it's like, they don't want to see. It's all about seeing fat people. So it's like, I saw this TikTok about. It's like, it's a different argument. Because when I hear people go like, we need more black representation or we need more um, you know, gay representation or something like that. We need more women. Sometimes it comes off a little bit cringy, though, when people go, we need women in, in particular roles. Because I always think, okay, like, fine, we could put women in these roles. But I often see when they put women in these roles, the movies just suck dick inherently because they had an idea of what they wanted to do, but they had a shoehorn shoehorn in a woman. And I guess they don't know how to write women nowadays because oftentimes I see when they do write women into movies and TV shows, they just make them men. And that's really not what you're supposed to do. Like, don't get me wrong. There's always like really, really powerful girl boss, queens, whatever that can do this stuff. But it's like every movie Women are, like, overly aggressive. They're super confrontational. It's like, dude, why don't you play off the advantages that women have, right? Maybe they can seduce men. Maybe they have, like, that natural mystique about them. I don't fucking know, dude. I'm sick of seeing women just being shoehorned into movies. And then the movie just suck dick. And then they go, it's because you don't like women. Nah, dude, I love women. Women are cool people, right? Organically speaking. But I'm not, like, trying to watch a movie that's literally garbage. And the reason why you want me to watch it is because I'll, I'll feel bad if I don't because it's a woman. And the same thing for, like, black guys, right? Just throw, If you're just throwing in black guys into movies because you feel like, who's that guy that played in Star Wars, dude? I forgot his name. But that dude, the, the, the more recent Star Wars movies, right? Um, he went on record to say that he, he was just in the movie because he was black. And that they, they didn't know what they were to do with him. Like, the first movie was probably okay. Like, The Force Unleashed was probably okay. Sorry, not The Force Unleashed, but you know what I'm talking about. The Force Awakens. And then the rest of the movies, they just didn't know what to do with him. So they just had a black guy in the movie because they needed a black guy in the movie. I forgot his name. But that it's just what it is. Like, I hate when they... Like, it's fine if you want representation. Could we at least try to make it um, organic and not just shoehorn in random minorities because you guys think that we need those things in there? It just comes off really, really disingenuous. And I'm sick of people saying that because a movie is, like, primarily a particular type of minority that it's a good movie. I will go on record right now. It's going to be a hot take. Black Panther was garbage. I don't care what anybody says. I know there are literally people out there saying that this movie was, like, the greatest, like, the second coming of black people or something like that. I have no idea. But I watched the movie because I was like, oh, my God, like, everybody's saying this movie is great, right? I watched the movie... It was mid. It was incredibly mid. It wasn't even like top. It was below average on the scale of Marvel movies. And Marvel movies are not even rocking with the highest scale in general. So it was an incredibly mid movie on that front. It was below average in scores in terms of movies itself. Like it was okay. Like I could watch it, I'm sure. And I wouldn't be, I would be fine. Like I wouldn't be like tearing my teeth out or something like that. But the movie wasn't good. It wasn't like a quality movie. It was just made because people thought it was going to be like a whatever. The point I'm making is like, 
if you want inclusivity in particular movies, media, and all this other stuff, that's fine. Just make the movie good so people can enjoy it rather than watching a movie and going, dude, this movie sucks. And then you guys go, it's because you don't like black people? Is it because you don't like women? No, it's just because the movie sucks. How? And the same Not thing could be said with like fat people. Again, like why do you just you just want random fat people in movies because fat people? Why? Why is that the case? Like you guys do realize that we we, we have to make oh we guess what we're making a movie on like ancient Rome. We're gonna need some fat people. Like this is what it is. I know oh fat people didn't exist at that time. Oh they did, but they were only like 10, 20 pounds over. Shut up. Get Tess Holiday. Te put her in. Put her in. Put Tess Holiday in. Oh you're doing a movie on like Nazi Germany during like 1943. Black woman. Black woman right here. Throw her in. We need the black woman. What was that one movie, dude? You guys ever see that one movie with the, the, the girl from Hunger Games, the black girl from Hunger Games, and she fell in love with the Nazi? Dude, that movie was fucking ass, dude. I couldn't even believe how terrible that movie was. I watched that movie from top to bottom, and that shit was absolutely garbage. I couldn't believe it. It was like a fanfic that somebody wrote. Dude, whatever, dude. Anyway. It doesn't fucking matter, dude. You know the movie I'm talking about, right? It was garbage. Not having like, who even came up with the story of like, hey, I got this great idea, guys. It's gonna, it's like, this is gonna be fucking great. Okay, listen. Nazi Germany already... Okay, so... Huh, great, okay? Wow. Okay, Nazi Germany, good. Nazi... Oh my god, okay, whoa. Huh. Okay, Nazi. Black girl. Mm, fantastic. Oh my god, this is great. This is gonna, like... Two sides of the opposite spectrum. One guy that's like super fucking racist and he hates Jewish people and black people are ew, but he falls in love, forbidden love. This is going to be awesome. And then he has kids with her. I spoiled the movie for you. I'm sorry. Don't watch it anyway. It's bad. People. So it's like I saw this TikTok about how not having clothes that you can wear means that you can't really go out in public because you yeah, have no to shit if you can't wear clothes you can't go out in public who would have known wear clothes out in public it's illegal to go out naked yeah, no shit not to mention stigmatized as hell if you're fat or disabled well i mean nobody wants to see well i guess maybe fat people of all people could probably pull it off like if i was going outside and i was clothless like if i was naked my dick would obviously be dragging behind me. It would be inc incredibly uncomfortable for me because I have to tie it around my leg and I need proper clothing items to like support my male genitalia, right? I'm just gifted like that. And so I'd have like rug burn on it. I would concrete burn on it and things like that. People would think, oh my God, look at that. That guy's rocking. What is that right there? It'd be a massive meat. So I'd obviously get arrested for that. But for fat people, it's like, it's it doesn't really make sense because I've seen tons of fat people that don't even look like they're wearing clothes sometimes, right? If you know what I'm talking about. Like, I've watched fat porns before where people have walked in, and I'm like, is that person wearing underwear? I don't know, actually. And then they lift up the gut, and I'm like, oh, they are wearing underwear. That's okay. I didn't know because, like, the gut was covering all of the extremities, right? You didn't know. And the same thing for boobs. Like, a guy... You already can wear – guys can have their nipples out, which is un, ugh, unconstitutional in my opinion. Like guys can have nipples out, but women can have nipples out. Come on. Make a change, America. But anyway, you can just tuck your boobs in, right? If you're a guy, just like – and just suck them in or whatever, tape, a little bit of tape, a little bit of something like that. Just walk out. doesn't matter, whatever, right? You do something like that. So um, out of all the people I feel like that could pull it off out in public and not face much consequence, I think it would probably be fat people, honestly speaking. I mean, there literally used to be ugly laws in this country. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I'm, oh, man, I remember diving into these ugly laws because people, there was a, a whole bunch of fat activists that were claiming that these ugly laws were, like, to holding down fat people. But if you actually looked into the law, it had said nothing about fat people. And matter of fact, all the research that I did had absolutely no correlation with fat people. There was no intersection with fat people. So when I saw these, quote, unquote, ugly laws, which really only applied to a very, very specific sort of person in america before like i think it was like the 1950s or something like that it was these people always want to reference things that are like a hundred almost a hundred years ago and things that don't even apply to them because they feel like there's merit on that particular front always gaslighting always virtue signaling and there are not ugly laws now but i get the feeling that a lot of people wish there still were anyway so if you don't have clothes <laughs> oh well i mean i'm kind of clothed up right now what are you trying to say right now are you trying to convince me you can't go out in public and People love that. They don't want to see. They don't want to have to see anything. They don't. They find like unsightly. There's yeah. like this entitlement to only a vagina, dick. Yeah, of course. I don't want to see that shit out in public. Like I don't want to go, bro. I don't want to like walk down the street, my shoes untied, and I bend over to tie my shoe, 
And then, like, as I look up, a BBC just crosses my path, and I'm smelling the pheromones of the the, the, the delicacy behind me. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, just sliding across my face. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see vagina either, dude. Contrary to popular belief where, like, guys all want to see vaginas and things like that, I'm not into it. I'm not trying to see just, well, look, okay, hold on. I'm into vagina, but I'm not into seeing vagina out on the street, like, out of nowhere. You know what I'm talking about? Anyway. Well, some vaginas don't even look really that appetizing. If I'm gonna keep it a solid buck with you, some most vaginas don't even look appetizing in my opinion. Don't have to see anything. They don't. They find like unsightly. Yeah, There's, like, big this big stomachs, big big guts, extra boobs. Entitlement to only seeing things that are like aesthetically pleasing. What do you yeah. mean entitlement? First of all, when you go out in public, you have no you have no sensation of privacy. So like, if you're seeing something that you don't like. Fuck you. That's what it is. Okay. Like I'm, I'm, I'm totally fine with walking down the street and seeing a very overweight, obese person shimmy down the road, huffing and puffing, gut on the floor, slouched over. I have no problem seeing that because you know why? Because I'm an adult and I can acknowledge that this is just what it is out in public. I don't care though. Like if that's what it is and you're obese, it's fine. I have no problem with obese people. But like, what do you even mean? Like entitlement? It's not entitlement. Most people are completely fine with seeing things that they don't want to see like unsightly there's like this entitlement to only seeing things that are like aesthetically pleasing to you and i feel like not making clothes is sort of a subliminal way to say like i don't want to see those people who need those clothes in public. i feel like these people reach really far i feel like what they're actually like they're like one of these people that believe that the earth is flat or like vaccines are uh the devil or whatever the fuck dude like these people are borderline they're, they're borderline um, conspiracy theories types people. They, they have to reach really far to validify their points. Look, I want them to stay home, do whatever they need to do to get aesthetically pleasing enough that they are allowed to be in public and we don't have to go out of our way to sell them something else, something different, and then they can just consume the regular people clothes, right? And what I'm hearing from you is like, you don't want to change yourself because you feel like you know, it's really interesting that you're saying that thin people are the ones that are entitled in the sense of like, we don't want to see fat people on public. But what I'm actually hearing from you is that you're entitled and you think that you should be the person that's supported, right? Like you should be the one that gets all the clothes and like extra clothes and things like that, even though you are literally outside the norm, the normative value of what human beings are supposed to look like. You are quite literally in a niche bracket when it comes to human beings and you feel like you're entitled to these clothing items. That's what I'm actually hearing. It's a, it's an interesting thing. It's an interesting take. Something else, something different, and then they can just consume the regular people clothes, right? And until then, let's just pretend they don't exist and not acknowledge them, because. But it, nobody's doing that. Like you, you're you're battling somebody that doesn't even exist right now. You. Like that's what's underlying all of this. No. It's you. And the it's me. It's always us. It's always us. Man, you guys, you know what? You're special. You you know you you right now watching this, you're special. Can you believe that this person is thinking about you without you even exist? Like, you, you don't even exist technically in their mind, but they're still thinking about you. Really think about that for a second. You are such a powerful individual that this person can't keep you out of their minds. Oh my God. You are quite special, quite beautiful, quite amazing. Listen, you can't change your, you can't change society, but you can change yourself. You can make yourself better fit in society, which only makes sense given the fact that you live within a society. Guess what? If you lived in the woods, you would have to make yourself more available to the environment that you're in, i.e. the woods. So you would have to like, I don't know, what, what do you do in the woods? I don't take off pants and wear shorts. I don't fucking know. Um, I, I don't know. Pretend, role play LARP as Rambo. I don't know. But the point I'm making is you're going to have to adjust to the environment. I think it's incredibly crazy to sit there and say the environment needs to adjust to me. In a, in a particular way, that could be okay. Like, in the sense of, like, society is fundamentally designed for human beings. But what the, what's what's really crazy about these people is that they'll say these things, right? And they'll say that, that we need society to change for them. When the entire society is already built for people in general, and now you want the society to be built for a very niche population of people that are in, so incredibly unhealthy that they probably wouldn't even make it to 40 in general. Wild part about this is the majority of people in the U.S. are designated overweight or obese. Which is a problem, dude. Which is a problem. Get that shit in check, okay? It's not cool to be overweight. It's not cool to be obese. Be responsible and eat right. It is the norm. It is what is normal. It is what is literally average. And if you're not willing to make clothes for the average person because it's too hard, something else is going on. It's like... It's so difficult for these people to understand that when I'm a thin person, let's say I okay, I weigh 150 pounds. If there was another gentleman that also weighed 150 pounds, give or take a 10 or 10, 10 pounds somewhere, that person is going to wear the same shirt as me, no problem. Like he's going to fit into that same shirt. If you are 300 pounds and that person 
puts on a 300 pound shirt, whatever that is, XXXX large, and they put that shirt on, it's going to fit them. But if another person at 300 pounds puts on that same shirt because of how weight is distributed differently, it is going to not fit them. You understand? So it is very difficult to put clothes into production like this, given the fact that it's going to be so incredibly dynamic and you're never going to actually appropriately fit fat people. So a lot of companies just kind of go, it's not worth it. And also the upfront cost of making these clothes, it is actually a significant value. And usually how they do it is one person is subsidizing the other person in terms of clothes. So like, for instance, they're not just going, um, the larger size are going to be priced differently. They might in some stores, but most of the time they don't do that. What they usually do is they have the whole assortment of clothes. So like small, medium, large, extra large, and so on and so on and so on and so on. They'll just take the, all the values of those clothes and then they'll just, they'll just average them out based off of the median value. You understand? So like if like a shirt, let's say hypothetically, one shirt was $20 at the largest, the largest uh, size. So $20 for this biggest shirt. And then the smallest shirt was $5. So they'll find the median value, which is like what? $10, $10. They'll just do $10 across the board because the averages will make up the person that's because like, there's going to be limited people buying that, that, that extra, extra large shirt, but it's okay because the person at the smaller end will be the one that ultimately subsidizes the price for the higher end the higher end shirt, if that makes any sense. So it's a very stupid, um, it's a very stupid thing to say because it's not as simple as why don't these companies make plus size clothing? It's a lot difficult. It's a lot more difficult than just saying the words. You understand? The chubbier the girl, the more peaceful she is. The skeletons are very rude. <laughs> is this true? What are we thinking about this? Can somebody let me know down in the comment section? Are skinnier girls just inherently worse, like in terms of attitude, like I, I, I see what they're saying when they always, they always like, they don't like the stereotype though, of when you're fatter, you have a better personality because you have to work on your personality. Here's the thing. Okay. Here's what I have to say about that. You know, how some people will go, Oh, karma. Oh, somebody will eventually have something happen to them. They're just bad people. And those bad people will eventually have to deal with the, 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 the all the terrible stuff that they've done. Like karma will adjust to them. That's not true. There are tons of really, really terrible, bad people in this world that are living fantastic, amazing lives. So whenever somebody says that, just correct them. Say, no, um, that's not how that works, okay? And that's not a case for you to be a bad person. That's just a case to tell you that stop harping on bad people and thinking that they're going to somehow be dealt with later on in life or something's going to happen to them. That's not how that works, okay? They're probably living really good lives, and that's just how the world works, all right? In the same way that I used to think, that if a guy was very, very big and muscular and big, that he was dumb, right? I used to think that when I was a teenager. He's like, well, I may be skinny, but at least I have intellect, right? No, that's not how that works, okay? There are plenty of really, really big, busty, beautiful men that are also very, very smart. And that's not a case for, like, you know, skinny guys that also can't be smart. I'm sure skinny guys are smart, too. But in the same way that if you're a fat girl, that doesn't inherently mean that you have a better personality than somebody that that is skinnier than you. That's not how that works. That just means that you're just prioritizing your personality above theirs, and you're trying to over-conflate yours compared to theirs because you have to. Otherwise, you would feel like there's no benefit to being fat at all, right? You have to. You have to somehow sniff the copium of, no, skinny girls are just inherently evil. They're just bad. They just have a terrible personality and I'm fat. Therefore, I have a good personality. It's not how that works. Nope. There are plenty of very, very skinny girls out there that have amazing, very, very great personalities, which is one of the reasons why I feel like when I see these fat people complain so much, by the way, about how, oh, I'm fat, but guess what? I'm like a really good person. I have a really great personality. I just don't understand why nobody wants to date me. Dude, you and everybody else, okay? Nobody thinks that they don't have a good personality. Everybody thinks their personality is great. Everybody thinks they're funny. Everybody thinks they're charismatic, okay? Now, it may not be true. A lot of people that say these things are lying, but that's not the that's not the point. The point I'm making is there are plenty of thin women or the thin people out there that have great, amazing personalities. And just because you're fat and you think that somehow that gives you a boost because you had to work on your personality, that's not how that works, okay? That's really not how that works. You're just sniffing the copium as hard as you possibly can to stay in your fat body. Work on yourself more than just the mentality. Work on yourself physically. Become big, busty, beautiful in terms of muscle. And you'll be, now you have to double up, right? Not only do you have the great personality, but you also have the great physique, right? To pair them up, fusion dance them together to create that perfect culmination of Vegito, Gogeta, in terms of the beautiful, busty personality and the beautiful, busty body. Obviously, no one has to be attracted to fat people. However, if you are, have not, never been attracted to fat people, but have been attracted to smaller bodies, maybe ask yourself why. 
I've always asked myself this question, and I've come to the conclusion that the reason why I am more attracted to smaller bodies is because I get more identifiers with the smaller body. So, like, I'll give you an example. When you're fat, you, f you pretty much look like every other fat person, unless you've done some kind of, like, surgical intervention or they're, you're just, like, genetically gifted. Because some fat people will have very, very good distribution of where the fat is laid, and a lot of guys will consider that to be preferable. I met plenty of dudes that like the very, very busty women in terms of women that are, like, 250, but they have a lot of butt cheeks or they got a lot of boobage or, I don't know, they're just shaped differently. They still got the hourglass. Their face maybe doesn't have hold a lot of weight. I know a lot of guys that like these women, right? Fine. But most women and most people are not going to have favorable distribution when it comes to fat. Therefore, I would find it more appropriate to fall. And I don't really even like the, the the women. If I'm, you know, obviously I'm talking about my preferences here. I don't really even like women that are like above 250 when it comes to that particular types of weight and things like that. It's just not attractive to me. And that's okay, right? You're attracted to what you're attracted to. And I'm attracted to what I'm attracted to, right? But I like the smaller people because smaller people have more identifiers. Like I can see jawline. I can see rib cage. I can see the bone structure. I can see how your body is shaped. These things are all very attractive to most people. And they're all identifiers of health, which I feel like most of the time is what people go for when it comes to finding somebody that's in a relationship. When you want to be in a relationship with somebody, um, health markers are usually going to also include thinness. So if you're thin and you're healthy, that's pretty good. And if you're already healthy, that means you're probably thin in general. So these things are all, you know, correlated very, very nicely. They're all wrapped together in a nice little box, beautiful box, an amazing box, a very shiny, amazing. Your your box, not like that, not like a vagina, but the box, like the thing that you're wrapped in, the whatever, your wrapping is beautiful. Yeah, there, anyway, there you go. I'm And I mean attracted to, and not able to see as attractive. Most people can find a fat person and say, they're hot, but do you feel individually attracted? Sure. So it's like a general way of saying that they're hot. I don't know. I've, t I've talked to a lot of people that think like very weird people are very attractive. Like, I don't know. I was talking to a guy and he said, listen, dog, Pokimane, you know, Pokimane, Pokimane's a 10. And I was like, get the fuck out of here, dude. A 10. That's crazy. If you think Pokimane's a 10, she's average. She's average, which is fine. It's okay to be average. She wears makeup and she wears, she knows how to accentuate her look. She could be a six or a seven sometimes, but it's okay to be average. I'm not shitting on anybody that's an average, um, but it's okay to identify people that are generally attractive. So that's cool. Individual preferences are valid and all, but when everyone's preferences preference happens to leave out a marginalized group. First of all, I don't really care that you consider fat people to be a marginalized group. Actually, I, I consider this to be wildly offensive comparison to, to compare like fat people to like actually marginalized groups, right? <laughs> it's so it's like so crazy. Like people that are actually feel, facing discrimination and then you just like throw yourself in that group because you know that if you did, you're going to find way more value in that than just saying fat people are oppressed, right? You have to throw yourself in a group full of like black people, gay dudes, some trans people and shit like that. You have to throw yourself in there. Otherwise, you have no value. But I think it's wildly offensive. And anybody that's in these actual marginalized groups should not be accepting these people. Insane in the membrane, if you ask me. Okay? And by the way, um, you're not going to shit on me for five... Like, what you're actually doing here, if you're, you're, you're saying when everybody's preferences happen to leave out a marginalized group, what you're actually saying is like, if you don't find this particular group to be attractive, you're actually discriminating against a discriminated group. Fuck you. That's fucked up. Why the fuck would you ever say that? You're virtue signaling so hard right now to try to make it seem like me not dating a fat person is the wrong thing. That's not cool. What people ought to do is find people who they like to be attractive and then date those people. You don't have to find fat people to be attractive, but if you want to, that's fine. But don't think that you're a bad person because you don't like, or you don't think fat people are attractive. That's craziness. <laughs> Can't believe this person would say that. Uh, that's usually because of biases that hasn't been unlearned. Nope. What it usually is, is fat people have a lot of health conditions, or maybe they just really don't look attractive to you because people find things that are attractive. Like I knew a dude that used to like rib cages, not like that. He wasn't on some like, you know, fucking eating people type of shit. Right. But he liked feeling the rib cage, right? He liked wrapping his hands around the rib cage and feeling women's rib cages, or maybe even men. I don't know, but he's, I don't think he's gay. Or I know a lot of black guys that like to suck toes, right? Black guys like really good looking women with toes. And that's cool, right? And I know that there are a lot of guys out there like toes, which is pretty normative nowadays. Like I know that maybe 10 years ago, if somebody had told a, a woman like, yeah, yeah, I really want to like lick your toes a little bit just right now with the sweet baby rays. A lot of women might look at that and go, what the Fuck, that's so weird. But nowadays, I feel like women are totally down for it. Like if a if if you're dating a dude and that dude says, "Babe, I want to like lick your toes," 
I don't, why would you say no? Like, what's wrong with that? You know, like sucking toes is like, I wouldn't suck toes personally. It's not my kink. But the point, the, the, what I'm saying is like, it's not a big deal anymore to suck toes. Sucking toes is like, whatever. That's normalized at this point. So anyway, yeah, if you like sucking toes, don't think you're less of a person for that. Sucking toes is like normal. It's fine. You could suck toes. Sucking toes is fine. Um, suck as many toes as you want. As long as it's with consenting people. Like you shouldn't be on the train suckling on people's toes without them looking. Don't do that. Don't do the secret suckle technique. But do it consensually. Suck toes consensually. Yeah, that's what we should do. Hashtag toe sucking consensually. That's what we should do, okay? Leave it down below. Anyway. Um, we're not taught how to be attracted. First of all, what do you mean we're not taught how to be attracted to fat people? What does that even mean? What, are you supposed to go to school and have your teachers tell you that fat people are beautiful? Okay, whatever, dude. That's a fucking non-point. That's a crazy-ass point. First of all, who's even trying? Who would even teach us that? Like, what, your mom, your dad is supposed to tell you that fat people are hot? Okay, whatever. Like, as an exercise, as an exercise, okay, do you know what attractive, do you know what's attractive about fatness the way you know what's attractive about thinness? Um, I'm sure that it really depends on the person because I know there's some guys out there. This is only for me talking, okay, this is my general experience because I only really talk to dudes, right? Some guys like the lumpy booty cheeks, you know what I'm talking about? The really, really lumps, the the, the lumpiness that looks like when you like where you put too much water in dough and it becomes a little bit lumped out. You know what I'm talking about? Like I know a lot of guys that have those like those particular sensations and they like that stuff. But oftentimes when I see these guys say that, they don't actually date the women that they say that they like. They're usually dating more practical people, people that they don't have to actually worry about. So I'm sure that there are attractive traits. I can think of a few things about a fat person that I could find attractive. Sure, like maybe the girthiness of a person could be beneficial in the sense of like if you were getting robbed, you can put that person in front of you and the likelihood of them surviving. Like because like you got to understand um, the gravitational pull of that individual is going to be a lot stronger than mine. So maybe they get like trapped in like a vortex or something like that. So that's, that could be cool. So I have that. There you go right there. That's a, that's an attractive trait, but thin people, I like jaw lines. Um, I like shoulder blades. I like seeing kneecaps. I like see, not kneecaps that are being like, like smothered or like sucked in by the fat surrounding the leg. I'm not talking about that. I don't mean like actual definitive kneecaps, kneecaps that I can place my tongue upon and lick anyway. Next, uh, next page. Let's see. Pretty much anyone I know could say what's considered attractive about fatness. Sorry, thinness. Yeah, that's true. Most people can because most people are attracted to thinness, obviously. So yeah, that just from averages, that makes sense. Anyway, even if they don't experience that attraction, slender frames, lightness, smaller wrists, smaller necks, jawlines, cheekbones, hips, Bigger than your stomach, toned abs, sorry, toned arms and legs, easier to lift, fitting, e easier to lift, fitting your clothes, assumed strength. Yeah, these things, I mean, hey, dude, you just pretty much narrowed it down, dude. These are all really good traits, 100%. These are all really good traits for, like, everybody, matter of fact. This is man or woman, 100%. This is great. You know exactly what we're talking about. I don't know how many people who could do the same for fatness. Frankly, I probably couldn't, even though I am attracted to fat people. I'd say soft bodies. Crazy. Like, I mean, first of all, if you're if your first thing that you lift is soft soft bodies, this is something that you would do if you were going to buy a mattress. And you're like, so what are you looking for in terms of a mattress? Something that's soft, something that's, you know, I can lay down on, something. That, like, if you're, if you're, the primary things that you're comparing to are like mattresses, dude, Maybe just adopt being a mattress. Like, go into, like, a sleep number. Go into, like, a sleepies or whatever and just lay down on the floor. Maybe somebody will buy you. I don't know. Like, it's just something I'm thinking about. Uh, that's a qu quick way to find a relationship, by the way. And then once once you get, like, once they form that big connection with you, then you just, like, stand up like, ah, I'm not a bed this whole time. I'm actually a person and you love me. And they'll go, oh, well, I guess I love you. You know, that's it could be a dream, dream relationship. Anyway. Soft body, big arms, <laughs> not the big arms that you're thinking about though, like long arms, it could be a little bit concerning to be honest. The tendency to be stronger, hmm, depends on what you mean by stronger. Like sure, they can be stronger in the sense of like they have to do a lot more to exist, therefore they're probably stronger. Like they probably have to lift a lot more, so they're probably stronger. But I think it's like bullshit strength a lot of times. Like if you're stronger, okay? If you're stronger because you think that that's because you can lift more weight because you're lifting your own weight, that doesn't really make any sense because you're only ever lifting your strength. Now, add on extra extra weight. Could you lift that? No, probably not. When in comparison, somebody that's thinner can lift their weight and usually more weight on top of that. Therefore, they're usually stronger. But sure, they're stronger organically. Fine. Smiles that make the cheeks round. 
okay. I mean, you, you're you really reaching. And otherwise, I'm not sure what to say. I know. You can tell. I mean, you, you come up with all this shit. It kind of seems like you're pretty attractive. You named off pretty much all of them. Anyway, the point, the point being, we don't know how to see fat bodies as attractive as attractive to us. Speak for yourself. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of uh, black guys. I, black guys have a very bad reputation for they're they're it's it's they're infamous for finding very fat women attractive. Even what's now considered culturally to be attractive about fatter bodies usually relies on the fat person being more mid sized like slim thick look. And it's not exclusive to fat bodies anyway. Yep, I hate it when people, especially women, will sit there and go, I'm you know, I'm just curvy. I'm just a little thick. And then you look at these women, and you're like, dude, you're 350. Like, what are you talking about? A little thick? Like, that's you're fucking obese. You're dying. Like, there's no, you're, you got diabetes. You don't fucking, you're not thick. You're dying. That's just what it is. And I hate it nowadays that we have so many different terminologies for people's bodies. Like, back in the day, it was just like, you're skinny or you're fat. Nowadays, it's like, yep, I'm thick. Um, I'm a BBW. I got a little bit extra. You know, I'm firm. I got a whole bunch of like, there's like a laundry list. Uh, a roller deck of, of, of adjectives that you can use to describe yourself nowadays. And it's absolutely annoying because they're all super ambiguous. Like if a woman hits you with, I'm thick, and then she show up 350, you're not even going to be mad because technically that is true. But the same thing could be said with like curvier people. Like I hate it when people say, I'm curvy. You can, And they'll say that thinner women can't be curvy. Are you fucking lying to me right now? Dude, thinner women 100% can be curvy. It's, it's just about the way that the, the naturalness of the body is shaped. You you can be 120 or 130 and be curvy. And and I'm going to be honest here for a second. A solid buck is going to be a hot take. When you're 300 pounds, I don't know what you're talking about curviness. You're lumpy. That's just say that. You're lumpy. You got extra appendages. Your body is misshapen. It doesn't look normal anymore. So no. I'm not going to consider those things to be anything other than exaggerations of what you actually are, or you're trying to sugarcoat, no pun intended there, sugarcoat the reality of your body, and you don't want the person to actually realize that you're big as fuck, okay? You don't want to put in the actual words, which is obese, because if somebody said, I'm obese, a lot of people go, ooh, damn, <laughs> nope, not doing that one, because that's a, not a good word compared to thick or BBW or whatever the fuck, and men don't really have those terminologies. Like, if you go on a dating app as a man, there's only, like, three or four like body types, you know, skinny, um, in skinny fit, uh, in shape or like overweight or like fat, I guess. Right. Those are like the most ones, but women, you, bro, if you're making a woman account, there's like nine or 10 different fucking body sizes. It's insane. Like I remember, I remember when I was on dating apps and I would look through these like, Oh wow, this woman looks cute. And then I would scroll through her profile and I would see like BBW and it's like, Oh, okay. But then I, like, I looked through another woman. It was like thick and looked through another woman. It was like yeah, firm. And I was like, what, dude, what, what is going on? And then I remember, like, I was like, oh, let me make a profile real quick so I can see what these, like, standards are. Dude, you had, like, 10. Like, there was, like, 10 or 11 different types of bodies, which is insane. We need to we need to equal out the genders, man, okay? We need to equal out those genders. Um, but, yeah, slim, thick, 100%. Because at least if you're – because, like, being thick nowadays is a good signifier for the, the amount of butt cheeks that you have. And having big butt cheeks nowadays is, like, super, super incentivized right now. BBLs and all that. Even some guys are getting BBLs, which is incredible, dude. Uh, I'm not – I've never really looked up guy BBLs. I don't even know what that would even entail. Most of the time when I see these women with BBLs, they don't even look, they don't look natural in any way. They look incredibly uncomfortable, matter of fact. I don't even know how you properly sit on that. Do you have to like lift your BBL and like put them on your side and then actually sit on your butt cheeks? I don't know. It just like, it actually makes me feel uncomfortable when I see that. So yeah, try to learn to see what's beautiful and cute and hot about fat people and it's okay if you end up still not being attracted to fat bodies in the end, but try to see it. Your preferences are probably more influenced by fat phobia than you think. Hashtag fat phobia. Mention hashtag fat, fat positive, fat liberation, fat acceptance. That's right, guys. You're all bad people for not thinking that fat people uh, are really hot and attractive and beautiful and things such and so forth, even though that you have valid reasons for those things. You're still bad. You're still bad for that, okay? Get over it. Stop being fat phobic all the time because you like jaw lines and shoulder blades and cheekbones and nice hip to hip to shoulder ratios. Stop it. Stop it, okay? You you guys are actually fat phobic, all right? But anyway, I love you. I care for you. I think you're a spectacular specimen of human being. I like the way that you ate that banana today. I was watching you do it. I don't care. Um, I'm, I'm not afraid to admit it anymore. When I was gazing upon you this morning, I literally licked my lips while I saw you eating whatever that was that you put in your mouth. I couldn't believe it. I was getting an entire different sensation in my body that I had never felt before. I was like warming up in places that I never have. And I got to tell you something. You have really nice bone structure. You have really nice bone structure. Matter of fact, 
you're giving me really nice bone structure right now, if you know what I'm talking about. You're a beautiful specimen of human being. I want to lick your eyebrows consistently. If you watch the video and you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. It helps me grow in the algorithm. So if you could do any stuff for me, I'd appreciate you so much. I appreciate you so much. If you want to become a member, you can. I have membership. So if you want to join, you can. All you have to do is click subscribe and then there'll be a join button right after that. And then you'll be a definitive member of the SERP gang. That's what we are. It's what we've adopted. And then you can also support me and Davina because she obviously the queen herself needs a lot of support I mean look at her she needs a shave or something but it doesn't matter she's beautiful regardless and you're beautiful regardless if you watch the video in its entirety and or you made it to this point in the video however you made it here leave it down below by typing in SERP because that's what we are ultimately if you watch the video to the end then I, I'm gonna just consider you that you are a SERP member you're a definitive SERP member you're a beautiful SERP member so yeah write SERP down below and then I'll accept you as a beautiful individual SERP gang individual Anyway, you're beautiful. You're amazing. I care for you. If you want to check out any of my social medias, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, my Twitter, my Discord server, and my second channel that I upload stream clips to. So if you want to check out any of that stuff, you totally can. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.